Good morning and welcome to another beautiful day in Utopia. I'm Lynn and we're gonna head off to the barns now and see what today has in store for us. And the shearer is coming in a couple of days so to level out the pen and stuff he's taking out a bunch of manure again and it's open they haven't figured out that they can come out yet hey buddies do you want to come outside for a little while come on out come on out okay so i guess i'm gonna go in and scare these fair weather sheep and it is fair weather but they don't like the heat Come on, you guys. Don't you want to go outside? You guys can go outside. There's a hill out there to play on. Remember how you guys used to come and walk on the porch? You're free to go out. You're free to go out. Go on out. There's a doorway. You're free. No, you don't have to hide in the corner anymore. You're free to go that way. Go on. So it actually took a while to get these guys out. They were afraid to come out. And these are the guys who were out all the time up and down the porch and everything. But they're happy out here now. <laughs> So these are the fall ram lambs, the Dorsets. The 44s are in this group. And um, the one Judas, the one Suffolk who went out of season that we kept. Here they come. Hi boys. Hi boys. talking to you about uh, skurs on the dorsets the other day and horns and polled and why people prefer polled sheep in general because of the problems you have with horns. Skurs can also be a problem but usually not as much of a problem but uh, when we were getting these guys out now um, one of the rams was under the feeder hiding didn't want to come out and we found out why and this is what happened to him. He's not feeling very well now. And that brown all over his face is blood. He's got scurs and he must have gotten in a fight. So he's knocked a scur off or loosened it or something. And he's feeling a bit wobbly. But we'll go sit over here and watch these guys. They're a little pumped right now. So as I told you, when they're pumped, you gotta pay a little more attention. But this is all exciting for them. See? They can't run and have fun. They gotta run and hit each other and be stupid. Because they're rams. Look at them. You guys, is it fun? It really is fun. These guys are all going to be getting sheared. So they won't look cute and puffy anymore. They'll look like just a uh, regular old white sheep. The, uh, <laughs> the puffy heads and the puffy faces and stuff make, is what makes uh, Dorsets look unique and uh, give them all that character. Dorsets are kind of um, an in-between breed, like they're not terminal and they're not really maternal either. They're kind of a dual-purpose breed, so um, they're, they're good, they're better on um, muscling traits than some of the maternal breeds, but they don't have as many lambs as some of the maternal breeds. 
so they're kind of in the middle there. Um, we find the Dorsets have less lambs in the Suffolk and I think they're, depending on what site you're reading, uh, they are supposed to be 1.6 to 1.7 lambs and that's probably what we're finding. Although we do lamb the majority of our Dorsets out of season in the fall. So um, when you let have sheep lambing in the fall, it's not a, a natural thing. So the ewes don't produce as many eggs. So your uh, lamb crop in the fall is usually lower. And um, I imagine if we had bred them all for spring lambs that our ratio would go higher. So that's what I'm gonna attribute that to. Because we've got in Canada, lots of genetics from New Zealand, Australia, some from the UK, and the American um, Dorsets. When you ask what a Dorset looks like, it's very difficult. Like some people will say, oh, that one doesn't have a Dorset head or that one doesn't have Dorset traits, but everybody's idea seems to be different about that and I read the standards and I'm looking to see what they're supposed to be and I go to the shows I do show Dorsets too and I look at what other people are showing and um, like some people say that wrinkles on a ram's face are absolutely taboo but lately at the shows um, people are saying doesn't matter if they have wrinkles as long as they have a good body it doesn't matter um, I heard that uh, Dorsets are supposed to have hair around their ears and a lot of the Dorsets have uh, bare ears or very very little hair um, and their ears look very similar to a Rito Arcot which is a Canadian breed of sheep and um, Everybody agrees that they have to have pink noses and white hooves. As far as I know, we're all in agreement with that. But um, there's just so all over the board that the consistency that I talked about in having when you have sheep, uh, we really like consistency. And, and even though um, in Canada there's American Suffolk and British Suffolk, they are so similar and they've been bred together just the two breeds that you get more of the Canadian type and it seems that it's very easy to find and know what a good Suffolk should look like um, I struggle with the Dorsets in for that reason because we really believe in consistency and when we look at them we're getting size consistent but we're still really working on the, um, the, I guess the phenomes, the, um, the appearance of them. So what we've decided to do since every breeder seems to have a different type is we, we've decided for ourselves the type of doors that we like best. And what we like best, um, I guess it goes more with I don't know, I, I guess it would be the British standard maybe more. Um, I like the woolly ears, so we um, are starting to select heavily for woolly eared rams and ewes, not woolly hairy, like they, they got a, like that fuzz around their ears. We really like that trait. Um, from everything I've read, the faces are supposed to be like this guy. Um, he's got hair, the, the wool on his pole, which is definitely a dorset trait. If the wool's not on his pole and it's peeled too back from the eyes, I'm always going to say you've crossed it because as soon as you put a cross in, the wool on the pole pulls back. And same with the wool on the, the legs, the front and the back. Um, Dorsets are supposed to have woolly legs, and I can see that these guys desperately need their hoop stripping. But, and you can see the wool goes all the way down. 
shearers may not like that, but that's a breed trait. So um, he, he's got the wool on his legs and we like to see that. And we like to see it on the front legs too. Um, a lot of them are missing it on the front legs, I find. And again, I always suspect that someone's crossed it. And we're, if you're a commercial breeder, it doesn't make one difference whatsoever. But we are purebred breeders, and uh, so these are the traits we're gonna try maintaining our Dorset flock. Uh, so woolly legs, for sure, woolly pole. And then we'll get to the cheeks. Um, here's a guy here. See, he's got woolly cheeks. Now we can see that really well uh, right now because he's got his wool on. And you can see his nose right here and his muzzle, it's all hair. It's not wool. There's a little, little tiny bit, come here, let's see. A little tiny bit of wool here by his eye, but it's not very much. So what I understand, like this guy, he's really bare. Oh, this is 44. This is one of the 44s. So 44 has a really bare face, but he's got the woolly cheeks and the woolly pole. That's what they're supposed to have from what I've read. And that's what I like. Um, what he doesn't have is woolly ears. See, his ears are quite bare. He's got naked ears. And so he's got a bit of the traits I want, but not all of them. Um, you notice the, the hairy ears more in the lambs, it seems as they get older, the hair seems to disappear because we did have a lot of hairy eared rams and I'm looking at them close here and uh, most of them have gone a little bit more bare. When I look at my suffix, or if anyone looks at them and they know anything about sheep, you could say, what breed is that? And everyone knows that's a suffix. But when you look at Dorsets, people, will ask you what breed it is and they're not sure. Is it a Dorset? Is it a Rideau Cross? Is it a Colombian? Is it a Rambouillet? Um, there are so many similar type breeds and they have been crossed um, quite heavily with Dorsets. And in Canada, the big cross is the Rideau Arcot and the, the Dorset because uh, Ritos are a maternal breed and Dorset add that little bit of meat to the Ritos and Ritos are highly prolific as well and some people just don't want quads and stuff like that so they'll they'll put the Dorset on to bring the lambing ratio down more to a two. Um, at our farm we call that cross a Dordo and it really is a nice cross but um, talking about Dorsets, um, yeah, that's the problem I have with them, the inconsistency. Um, as you can see, they've all lined up nicely for me, which I'll thank them for that. And uh, you can see we've gotten size pretty, pretty bang on because we were looking for a certain size, which is the medium. And we're looking for the good testicles and stuff and they all meet that criteria. Uh, shearers don't like these sheep as much because uh, they have to shear the faces and the legs and so they're a lot more work that way but they're really cute and um, a lot of times at the shows um, the breeders will bring in the dorsets and they will shear off the legs the face and like I said I'll show you these guys when they're shorn at that point they could be any white breed because um, there's no distinguishing features. And as a buyer, I really, really dislike um, the breeders cutting it off their legs and face. I would like to see them leave a little bit just so I can see that it's there. So I know what I'm purchasing. I'm purchasing for the traits that I want. If people cut them off, I have no idea what trait they have. Um, now, prolificacy, like I said, is down on the dorsets, but they, um, they lamb easily. You don't have too many problems with them lambing because they tend to be a smaller lamb. 
and they are slower growers than Suffolk. So whereas those Suffolk lambs are gaining about a pound a day, these Dorsets, I'm guessing uh, they're gaining three quarters tops. Um, you can get a real humdinger ram or something that's gonna uh, challenge a Suffolk, but it's, it's not the norm. So the main reason to have a Dorset that is a fantastically wonderful and handy trait is that um, you can use them in, in accelerated lambing um, situations. So um, you can lamb basically three, uh, three lambings in two years with these guys because they'll breed pretty well any time of year. And that's good for um, productivity if you want to push your ewes that hard. Um, we, we like the fall lambing. It, it takes the pressure off our spring lambing, which is extreme, well, our winter lambing, which is extremely busy. And uh, fall lambing, the, the weather is just perfect uh, for having lambs. It's cooler temperatures, the bugs are gone. Um, so nobody's freezing, nobody's dying from the heat. Uh, they're not, they're not off their feed because um, of the heat and stuff like that. So they grow well, they do well. Lambing's pleasant for us and for them. So that's why we like to lamb them in the fall. Um, but people can lamb them in the fall and then go on and breed them again. Um, they'll, they'll, they'll breed pretty well back to back. So uh, if you do have dorsets and you want to talk about weaning, you definitely want to wean those ram lambs off earlier than you would need to um, wean a Suffolk lamb off, ram lamb off, because uh, these guys are highly prolific. Like, the, it's amazing how young a little ram lamb can breed. Um, all the accidents you've seen with breeding on our farm um, usually have been from a ram lamb, a Dorset ram lamb who we didn't suspect was old enough and obviously was. Um, what else can I say about this breed? They're much more uh, skittish, much more flighty, much more difficult to handle in general. Uh, we've worked really hard at quieting ours down. You're quiet. And here's the guy with the horn, or the, the missing horn. He's come up to us now. Buddy, you are a mess. I hope you're okay. Come on, put your head up. Oh, he's gonna, he didn't want to be alone with. But what a mess. And that's why you don't want horns. Because inevitably, they get their horns caught. Some other ram, they get in a little battle and it gets knocked off. And I told you on the video with horns, they're bleeders. Just terrible bleeders. He's not bleeding Here's anymore. Here's my little ewe lamb that I say that I really like. She's 141. And look at her legs. And look at her face. Honey, turn around. She's got the legs. And look, at she's got the wool on her cheeks and not on her face and on her head. So that's what we're looking for. You also are, um, you got no, none on your face. And there's another really nice ewe lamb. See, the wool is in the right places on her. And her legs, you saw that nice space on her legs. One of our own breeding. And you can see how well, um, her, her, how good her legs are. How her wool is in the proper place. Her ears, oh, their ears are supposed to be tilted slightly above horizontal. So she's got that too. And woolly cheeks, woolly pole, but bare face, woolly legs. This is one of our ewes. We bred her and we showed her. She's a very pretty dorset. You want to have that nice square pink muzzle too. See how square her, her mouth is? Flat at the end. 
You want to see that in all your sheep, no matter what the breed. Good square muzzle means good square rump, good eater. And uh, that's 141, it's mom. So there's her lamb right over here. Beautiful ewe lamb and a beautiful ewe. That time it worked. And there's another girl back here with a, a really nice square muzzle too. And she also has the traits I like. And these are, these are the ewes that we've bred. <laughs> and you gotta love the hairdos. It's always, with the suffix, it's always, I feel like they look beautiful when you shear them off because you can really see that coloring and they look so clean. With the Doris, it's, it's almost a sad thing because they're, they're tufty little wool. Uh, I don't know, it's just so much character. See the wool on his face? He's a nice bulky ram but the wool comes up his cheeks and goes all around his eyes and a lot of people say that's okay and maybe it is but i would personally like to see less to me that's too much looking like a south down a south down is a breed of sheep that has a woolly face they're supposed to have a woolly face and the eyes just poke out like that and Hamish maybe I'm just being a little harsh on you because I mean it's not that bad is it I can't see your eyes though that can't be a good thing there you go but anyway he has a good square muzzle and stuff and he to me he looks totally like a dorset except that I would like to see less wool on that face um if I wanted to get uh, a woolly face, I would buy a South Down because South Downs are a, a really nice breed, right, Andrew? That's a shout out to Andrew Paisley who has South Down sheep. And we'll shortly also be doing uh, YouTube videos. So we'll look forward to that. But anyway, that's gonna be it for my talk on Dorsets. I think I got everything. I like the sun. I just caught Scotty sunbathing in the ram pen, but still sunbathing. Okay, Scotty. The livestock guardian cat. Well, we're going to call that a day and hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.